Take a look at our tail of the tape. Sean, take us behind the numbers. Joe Jones is, is taller, but F.A.'s got the, the longer reach. Get ready for fireworks. Ladies and gentlemen from Staples Center here in Los Angeles, we get set for our next matchup, 10 rounds. This in the Cruiserweight Division. Your three judges scoring this contest at ringside will be Edward Hernandez Sr., Pat Russell, and Zachary Young. And the referee in charge when the bell sounds is Thomas Taylor. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He comes in wearing the black trunks, weighing in officially at 193 pounds. His record 11 wins, eight of those coming by way of knockout against two losses, fighting out of Lynchburg, Virginia. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mighty Joe Jones. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. He comes in wearing the black trunks, weighing in officially at 199 pounds. As a professional, he's undefeated. Nine wins, all of those coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Ugeli in Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the unbeaten, the Nigerian Pitbull, Efetobar Opochi. Boxing chief second. Boxing chief second. Come on, coach. Okay, guys, belt lines are good on both sides. I gave your instructions in the back. Protect yourselves at all times. Listen to my commands. Touch them up. Back to your corner, gentlemen. Good. F.A. Tobar Apochi, we will call him F.A. for short. He's undefeated, and Ronnie Shields, his esteemed trainer, feels that he could become a world champion. At 33 years of age, he knows that the time is now, and the one thing about F.A. Apochi, it's all business. Joe Jones, though, has other plans and looks to spoil the forward progression of F.A. Apochi. You ready? You ready? Referee in charge, Thomas Taylor, we are underway. Sean F.A. Apochi looking to become a world champion in the cruiserweight division, but he's got to get past this test in Joe Jones. Looks like Joe Jones did his research. He's on the move, which is what he needs to be. There's a left hook. The last time we saw F.A. Apochi here on FS1 was back at the end of May last year at the Beau Ravage. His biggest win to date against the high-level amateur standout in Earl Newman. The pressure was too much. Big right hand that caught the attention of Jones. And excuse me if I didn't say the power as well. Big right hands and big left hooks from, from a pouch is what we're going to get. Well, incidentally, Ronnie Shields trained a notable cruiserweight in Evander Holyfield as well. When I asked him if there were any similarities, Ronnie said no, that essentially F.A. throws with venomous intentions as he is cracking Joe Jones in the early going. I said... I said, hey, why don't you teach him how to take some of that steam off of his punches? He says natural. He says he's just naturally strong and heavy-handed, and he's going to punch with power in both hands no matter what I tell him. There's a big right hand as Joe Jones has felt the power of the 33-year-old. The one thing, though, that Ronnie Shields did tell us in fighter meetings about Apochi is that they are working on defense. He said emphatically that defense is what gets you to becoming a world champion. It's true. And, you know, obviously, well, not obviously, but Apochi is going to get to a point where he's not going to be able to just walk up on, on any of on all of his opponents. And when that time comes, then he'll need some head movement. He'll need to be able to do a little bit more than just stand there and, and, and wear the shots on his gloves like he's doing right there. Coming up on 70 seconds to go in the first round here in the cruiserweight division. F.A. Apochi looking to keep his perfect record intact. Joe Jones, whose middle name is Lewis, named after the great world champion in Joe Lewis, has other plans. But there's a nice right hand that caught the attention of Apochi. That was the one thing I saw about Joe Jones is he's got a big right hand. It's just about landing it against Apochi. But if Joe is able to get some space and start popping that jab, he may be able to set up the right hand. Well, Joe Jones coming off of his second career loss, an eight-round unanimous decision defeat at the hands of Richard Rivera, but there's a left hook, and Apochi has Over there. him hurt. Down he goes. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You okay? Yes, sir. Walk to the left of me. No, walk to the left and come back. Yes, sir. Continue. All right, let's go. F.A. Apochi looking to close the show against mm. Joe Jones in our opening stanza. F.A. did not come here to dance. Big right hand seconds, by Apochi. 
Yeah, he's going to try to finish it. A couple seconds here. Afia Bochi in the mindset to not let it go to the judges' scorecards with this big shot. Sean, what does Joe Jones have to do in order to gain the W? You know, I had keys. None of them matter. Use your jab, use your foot movement, and try to land a right hand. Simple as that. In the meantime, for F.A. Pochi. F.A., he's going to apply some pressure. He's going to land that power that he's been landing. And like my last key, just touch him. Eventually, he's going to touch him and land a big one and, and get Joe out of there if he's not able to move and implement his jab immediately. Yeah. Well, Thomas Taylor, who is refereeing his 403rd professional fight, was busy in the first round, conning the knockdown. We'll see if Apochi can finish off Joe Jones and crack the double-digit win mark. Two things you can do against a guy with a lot of power like Apochi. Move like Joe is doing, but along with the movement, you gotta have some speed behind your punches or land something to hurt him yourself. There's a right to the body by F.A. Pochi. Notable world champions from Nigeria. The legendary and Hall of Famer Dick Tiger. Also Sam Peter, who won the heavyweight championship of the world over Oleg Moskayev. Pochi's finding the body, too. He's finding the good left hook to the body. I think Joe's hurt right now. There's a left hook and followed by a right. F.A. Pochi is cerebral-like in his attack. What does Joe Jones have to do to stay away from the power and the just the sheer aggression of a poachy? I tell you what, it's not going to happen very much. I, at least I don't expect it to. But right there, you saw him throw a jab, and then he pivoted out, and he was able to get around a poachy and, and find some space. Find some space, find your rhythm with the jab, and try to land that big right hand. He's got a strong right hand. Joe Jones does. Joe Jones said that due to COVID, it has been rather difficult to find quality sparring in his hometown of Lynchburg, Virginia, and he just ate a big right hand, and he's hurt once again. And that, that worried me hearing him say that he wasn't able to get good sparring because you need someone who can really attack you the way a poster <laughs> in order to get ready for a fight like this. Great body shot, great body work right there from a poaching. We're starting to see a variance when it comes to the selection of punches by the Nigerian. I think he's using the overhand right to cut him off, and I think he's using the jab to cut him off, but he really wants to go to the body to hurt him. There's a right to the body on the left side of the ribcage of Joe Jones. Poji's throwing the body shots the right way. He's going around the elbow. He's not hitting the elbow. And he's not going to the inside where he can't find the body. He's going around the, the elbow, which is great. Well, you pointed out punch selection, Sean, and that's what I'm impressed by, by F.L. Pochi. He's not burning himself out here in the second round to try to take out the right hand. Down goes Jones for the second time in the fight. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You okay? Come here. Got to protect yourself, man. Show me something, all right? Thomas Taylor, a quality official, the second time that Joe Jones has tasted the canvas. A third time could signal the end for the Virginia native as a poachy pouring it on. Right hand over the top, but now a poachy, he might have gotten hurt. He might have gotten lit up with the right hand. Stop at the bell, gentlemen. A poachy went in forward, and he ate a right hand from Joe Jones, but two knockdowns thus far by a poachy. Yeah, I, I, I've been talking about Joe Jones's right hand, and I wasn't just saying that to talk about him. He can land. Uh, well, first we got a poachy here. Big right hand, big one two, boom. And when I saw that punch land, I was like, "There's no way he's gonna stand up to that." And sure enough, eventually he did go down. And then here's a knockdown again. Better. He's throwing a chopping right hand. He's coming right down. A lot of power and a punch like that, and a right hand like that. But we also saw the right hand from Joe Jones as he caught F.L. Pochi coming forward. Right there, boom, good straight. He's got some power, he does. I wasn't just saying that to say it. Joe Jones has some power if he can find some space and some courage to punch and not just survive. Then when he starts, he may find some. Well, you talked about that knockout ability by Joe Jones. He has a 61% knockout percentage. Obviously different compared to that of a poacher with 100% knockout percentage. But as you pointed out, when it comes to this kind of weight class, cruise weight and above, you have to be cognizant of the power. Absolutely. Cognizant of the power and also the defense. We talked about Apoche having improvements to make defensively, there's one right there where he just gets caught with a straight right hand. 
FL Pochi with a knockdown of Joe Jones in the first and the second. And now the Nigerian is really trying to pour it on to get rid of Joe Jones. One thing that pressure does, it doesn't allow you to think. You know, on the outside, we're saying, man, if he could just get some space. If he could, he gets space and still nothing. And with more on every no. pressure, down goes Joe Jones for the third time in the fight. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You okay? You just made up. No, he did not. You all right? Can you continue? Fight's over. It's over. And That's this it. one is over. You didn't answer my question. As That's FL Pochi, 10 fights, 10 stay, victories, stay right 10 knockouts. The Nigerian is certainly problematic for a lot of cruiserweights as he demonstrated his power over Joe Jones. What a finish by F.A. Pochi. I might have bumped heads, Sean. I think we need to go and take a look at that again. Yeah, I was going to say, I didn't see what happened after the punch was landed. Very good body shot, and I think he's complaining. Yeah, he's complaining about the headbutt right there at the end of that. It's not really a headbutt. It's more of a clash, and it was extremely accidental. It wasn't on purpose. He's coming in. That, that's what happens. You, you go into the body. Head still up a little high, and then the other guy leaning in to protect the body, and, and you get a head clash there. But plain devil's advocate, Thomas Taylor did ask Joe Jones, can you continue? And instead of answering him, he was not he was not saying anything he, whatsoever. He hesitated. And uh, you know, I think we all saw him hesitate. His his corner saw him hesitate. And uh, he who hesitates, lost. And Anthony also congratulations Davis. to that man, F.A. Apochi, with a third round stoppage over Joe Jones. Let's look at the statistical analysis, Sean. As you take a look at the yeah, punch it, dance. Yeah, it was just one-sided just the whole way. And, you know, one thing we mentioned is it was only a matter of time before that knockout was coming. Ladies. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at 51 seconds of round three for your winner by technical knockout and still undefeated, the Nigerian Pitbull, Efetobar Apochi. And just to clarify, Sean, when it comes to the end of the fight, it was a clash of heads that brought down, that put Joe Jones down. However, Thomas Taylor did ask him, can you continue? Joe Jones did not respond. I think Thomas Taylor made the right and appropriate call. Absolutely he did. And I just want to bring back the fact that pressure will, won't allow you to think. And, and so Joe Jones never had a moment to really think and, and understand what was going on. And when he went down that last time, he, am I hurt to the body or was it a head clash? You know, and, and he just, he couldn't figure it out. In the meantime, referees said, hey, do you want to continue or what? And and, and Joe, Joe Jones could not figure it out. I think it's fair to say that the ending was academic. It was only a matter of time before Apochi would end the night of Joe Jones. I agree. F.A. has, he's, he's got a lot of power in both hands, throwing big left hooks and big overhand rights. Well, F.A. Apochi, he's 10-0 with 10 knockouts. You know what? I want to see more of him. And I think that Apochi can certainly make the cruiserweight division relevant again here to American television audiences. You know what? I agree. And right there, they were, they were playing some music, and he was dancing. That means he's light on his feet. That means he's got some movement, more things he can add to his arsenal before he gets up there with the big big, big boys. And the one thing about F.A. Apochi, he's all business. He doesn't eat meat. He's a pescatarian. He's all about testing himself. And he is now standing by with our very own Jordan Plant. Thank you, Ray. Congratulations. It's your birthday month, and what way to celebrate it rather than a stoppage. Great performance. You know, you were dominating him. How do you feel about what you were able to do? Because I know you probably came in with a game plan, but did you do everything that you and Ronnie came up with? Uh, yes, pretty much, because I already know, like, when I, when I want to face guys in the cruiserweight division, they want to run away from me, because when they see that, that record, 9-0, 9-K-O, they know I'm a big puncher, so they want to run around. I was going to take my time, you know, but I heard him say he's going to mess my record up. I was like, wow, are you serious? So okay, let's and, do it. And when you, when you hit him, that first time that you got that knockdown, what was going through your head? What, what did you think? No, nothing. I, I just, when I got the knockdown, I said 10-8. That was it. I was like, 10-8. Okay, round one, 10-8. 
I went back to my corner, knowing that that made me relax. Like, okay, it's not a problem. Yeah. I got one round. Like, I'm two, I'm two round ahead. So when I got the second round, 10, 8, I was like, okay, the fight is done. You knew you had it in the bag, and that's what you did. Congratulations Thank to you. you. We're looking forward to seeing you in the ring again soon.